Well, hallelujah. Uh, I want to just thank the Lord for another um, Sunday, another podcast Sunday. Uh, my name is Pastor Desmond Wedderburn. Um, my ministry is Calvary Crosses Church, and this is our Sunday morning experience. Um, affectionately called um, Sunday sit downs when we get to hear from God, what God is saying, and just um, always in amazement to see and hear um, how God is going to um, just work things out on our behalf. Amen. Um, we are on Zoom um, every Sunday morning between the times of 830 to 930 Eastern Standard Time. And um, just love just love for you to join us and just to hear uh, for us to hear together what God has to say. Um, at the beginning of this year, God had given us a theme for this year, and it's called Taking Territories. And it's going to be, I'm not sure how long the series is going to be, uh, but this is the first message um, of the series. And uh, if you would turn with me uh, to turn your Bibles or your tablets or your phones, or maybe you know the Bible by heart, uh, can you turn with me to Joshua chapter 1? And we are going to read the whole entire chapter. Um, and, uh, it goes as this, um, verse one, Joshua chapter one, verses one through 18. And it goes as follows. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, Moses assistant, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore arise, go over this Jordan you and all this people into the land that I'm giving to them, to the people of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea towards going down, um, of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you in all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Uh, verse six, be strong and courageous for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written." For there, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, this is verse 10 now, and Joshua commanded the officers of the people, Pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, prepare your provisions for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan to, to, go into, to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall, rem shall remain in the land that Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. But all the men of valor among you shall pass over armed before your brothers and shall help them. Until the Lord gives, verse 15 now, until the Lord gives rest um, to your brothers as he has to you, and they also take possession of the land that the Lord your God has given them, then you shall return to the land of your possession and possess it. The land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond the Jordan towards uh, the sunrise. And they, and they answered Joshua, 
all that you have commanded us, all that you have commanded us to do, and whatever and wherever you send us, uh, we will go. Just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. However, whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your words, whatever you command him shall be put to whatever you command him shall be put to death. Um, only be strong and courageous. For this title, um, for this first message of the series Taken Territory, um, the title of this message is called Guaranteed Greatness. The game plan of God. Guaranteed greatness. The game plan of God. Let us pray. Um, Father God, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray, God, that you may speak to us, Lord, what heaven has to say, Lord, what is on your heart today, God. And I know that we will be blessed, God. May you be glorified today, Father, um, by what is revealed and what is said and what is preached today and taught today. Uh, may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Guaranteed greatness, the game plan of God. You know, when I first came into, when I first met the Lord, I remember when I, you know, you know my, maybe mo most of you know my story. You know, I was uh, gave my life to God when I was over in the islands. I left New York and I went over to the islands to run a business and I met the Lord there and he sent me back home, he sent me back to New York. Um, and I went through a period of homelessness and stuff like that and God delivered me from that months later. Uh, I eventually got baptized and then I, I went down to South Florida to um, live with my sister for a year. And in that time, you know, um, just coming off the streets of New York, homeless. And, you know, uh, my sister, she just happened to have a great job. She was a general manager for a hotel. And um, I, so we lived in a hotel. I lived there with her um, while she was running the place. And, you know, and that particular night, I... I went for a swim in the pool. They had a heated pool and stuff. And I was like, wow, God, you took me off the streets of New York. And now here you, here you have me swimming in this pool. And God told me to look up into the heavens and ask for what I want. And I said, God, you know, I'll take a star. And God said, you got to ask for something greater than that. And I said, well, I'll take a solar system. And he said, you got to ask for things greater than that. And I said, greater than a solar system. Galaxy. I said, I'll take a galaxy, God. Thank you very much. God said, you need, you need to ask me for something greater than that. And I'm like, greater than a galaxy? In the stars? God said, you need to ask me for the universe, and I will, and I will throw you a few galaxies. And God said, ask me what you really want to ask me. And I said, God, because of what you did for me, delivering me from demons and from homelessness and from suicide, you know, all within this year, you know, and giving me eternal life and how you were so great for me, God, I want to be great for you. I don't know what that's going to look like, God. I don't know if it's going to be quantity or quality or, you know, whatever it means to you, God, whatever greatness means to you, God, that's what I want. And I said, God, because you, you know, you laid on your life for me, I want to do the same thing. I want to be one of your greatest uh, um, disciples, sons, you know, recipients. I want to be one of your greatest warriors, God, that ever lived. You know, I know that was a big ask from God. And God said, OK. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> you really OK with that? And God is saying that, yes, I want everybody to be great. I've called everybody to be great because I know who I am in them. And the Lord is saying that, you know, I'm the greatest of them all. And because I am inside people, they are also, they have the ability to also be great. And as God was speaking to me just today about this message, he said, my game plan is to glorify myself through everyone and to show the greatness of how I created them. You know, in this chapter of um, in this chapter of um, Joshua, we know that Moses had died, and in the beginning, God said, "You know, Moses is dead." 
And and you know and and things now has to transfer over from Joshua, from most the um, the era of Moses to the era of Joshua. And you know, God didn't waste any time. He said Moses is dead; he's not coming back. And so, between verses one and between verses eighteen in this chapter, we see Joshua starts out as the assistant as of Moses to where Joshua comes into his own self by verse 18. And between verse 1 and verse 18, there was a transformation that took place in Joshua that he will never be the same again, that God was preparing him for greatness that he have never seen. Moses was good to bring them to the wilderness. But now we have to step this game up, the Lord is saying. And, you know, he said, Joshua, you're the one that's going to lead us over into the promised land. And Joshua is a type of Jesus. And so my first point is that God, in the beginning of the chapter, began to um, reassure Joshua um, of certain things. And so my first point is reassurance, right? Um, verse 1 says this. Well, verse um, verse 2 says this. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, go over to Jordan, you and the people, into the land I'm giving to them. And this is where God began to reassure Joshua. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, just as I have promised Moses, from the will. And he, then he began to talk about the territories, right? And then he said, in verse 5, he says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Um, just as I was with, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. And God begins this chapter, right, by eliminating the thought of Moses out of his mind. That, you know, sometimes when you're with someone so long, you know, I've heard married couples say the same thing. I've heard best friends say the same thing. When their friend or their other counterpart is taken away, it is almost like there is like something missing out of them. But God stepped forth and he was just like, okay, Moses is dead. Now I got to like work with you. This is, this is the game plan that, you know, things are going to get a little bit more intense, but I'm going to show you Joshua who you are, the Lord is saying, Right? And so God was reassuring him, you know, that, listen, there is a promise, right? There is a promise ahead of you that I have selected you to lead my people into that promise, right? God says that, you know, everywhere your foot trod or tread, that you shall take that possession, right? That no one will be able to stand before you or defeat you, right? Right? And he says, as I am, as I was with Moses, right, I will also be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And God was reassuring Joshua that it's going to be okay. You know, and maybe God has spoken to you about doing certain things. And maybe you have lost loved ones and you don't even know how you're going to make it. Maybe you've lost, you know, a grandmother or a mother or a father or a sibling or someone or a mentor or someone who was really personal to you, right? And, you know, physically died, right? And then you're wondering, how am I going to move on without this person? Maybe that person has died spiritually, emotionally, and, you know, maybe you're maybe in a marriage and that person seems dead, and that person doesn't seem alive. Or maybe you're with friends and, you know, they've decided to go in a different way. And you're wondering, how am I, you know, going to survive? How am I going to survive? Maybe there's certain things that's dead in your life. Maybe you lost your job or maybe there's things that you were depending on to help you get through. And somehow that is cut off. And then how are you going to manage and God just reassures Joshua that, listen, the same way that I've been with others that you know about, right, personally or maybe not personally, the same way that I'm going to be with you. 
And God reassures Joshua that I will never leave you or forsake you. As a matter of fact, he said that no one will be able to stand before you, that, that you will be victorious. God is making some guarantees to him. That I, God said, that as far as I'm concerned, God speaking, that you are great and your greatness is guaranteed, right? God is saying that's always been my game plan since the very beginning, since I created you. And then God walks Joshua through, through three, three things within these few verses that I saw that um, I thought that was so transformational. The, the first thing, the the um, the first thing that God said, one of the first things that God said in verse six, he says, um, be, be strong and courageous. And God repeats that between verses, between verses six and verses nine, he repeats it three times. And when he repeats, be strong and courageous three times, he meant something differently you know, um, in all three times. The first time that God says, you know, um, be strong and courageous, this was in reference to possessing the promise, right? Uh, if we go back to verse six, it says, be strong and courageous. You shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them, right? Right? And so the first time that God says, be strong and courageous, he is directly talking about going over and possessing the land, right? The inheritance that he has for them, right? That, you know, God will always tell us, you know, do not fear, do not worry, because God tells us things because for a reason, right? He just doesn't tell us things just to tell us things. He tells us things because it's for a reason. Have God ever told you, don't worry about it, it's going to be okay? He's saying, don't worry about it because it's going to be okay because of a situation that you might be going through. And so God repeats himself, right, in three occasions, right? Be strong and courageous. And the first one was talking about inheritance, right? Right? God has an inheritance for us that is guaranteed. There is an inheritance for us. We know about eternal life, but there is an, there is an inheritance for us because of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, right? There is boldness. You know, God is, has told us that he will grant us mercy. You know, God has granted us that he will give us his grace, you know, um, his power, right? His peace. Right? God would help us to, to walk in, you know, self in, in confidence in Him. Right? God has given us guarantees in our lives that He is saying that be strong and courageous, you know, because I have that I have guarantees and God have given you an inheritance, right? physically, emotionally, spiritually inheritance, right? And, and eventually, you know, heaven one day, right? And so that's the first thing I saw when God said, be strong and courageous to Joshua. The second time, and probably the most important thing, the most important one was the second one to me. God told Joshua, secondly, to be strong and very courageous again, as we look at in verse seven, it says, only be strong and very, very courageous. Now he's not only saying, um, only be strong. It's, it's a difference. In the, in the first one, it just said, be strong and courageous, right? Now he is putting an emphasis now on the strong and courageous. But he's saying, only be strong, right? So he's trying to make Joshua realize that, hey, I'm talking to you. Now we're really going to get serious now, right? He said, only be strong. And then he says, and very courageous, right? When you use that word very as an adjective, I believe, someone will correct me. And it, it implies, you know, an emphaticness to, you know, to, to the word that comes after, that proceeds after, right? That be very courageous and only strong and very courageous, right? And there's a reason why God used those words before strong and 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 uh, and and courageous, right? He says that be careful, right? In verse seven, it says, 
being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you, do not turn to the right to the left that you that you may have good success wherever you go, right? And so God is saying like, hey, I want you to be strong and courageous in the first part that you're going to get the inheritance, right? That's a given. Right. But he's saying that be be only be strong and very courageous. Right. Because I want you to understand the law and to get into my word. Right. Right. The epicenter of like of of this only be strong and courageous. God talks about that. You will have good success. Right. That, that in order for you to, to successfully take territories for God, right? You ha- God first has to ha- um, take territories within you. Territories of your mind, territories of your heart, territories of your emotions, territo- territories of even your physical body. That God is saying that in order to take territories, right? Wherever God sends you or however God sends you, you know, in whatever mind state or whatever, in whatever heart condition, right? Um, God is saying that first he needs to take territories within us. And at first God said, you know, be strong and courageous. But now he's saying only be strong and very courageous. Why? Because now God is telling uh, Joshua, I need some intimacy with you. I need to take those territories within you first that I can command things within you and I know that there's going to be an intimacy uh, within you. And God is saying, you want to know what, and God begins to talk about, and then you will have good success, right? Before it was like, go take the land. But God now is really, um, really um, up in the ante, you might say, that he's getting real specific. He said that this is so important. The intimacy with God is the most important thing that you can ever do in your life, right? God was given uh, Joshua the strategy for success. The strategy of success is not how much you know. The strategy of success is not how much resource you have. The strategy for success is the, you know, the influence that you might have and the position that you might have. The strategy for success lives and dies with the intimacy with Jesus Christ, right? And God was like saying, like, listen, this is how we're going to have success. Let's go into verse eight now. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may be careful to do according to how what is to what is written in it. For then you will make for then God says you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. You see, God is saying then is such a, a powerful word because it, it shows the timing of everything. You know, you cannot have good success before, before your intimacy with God. But once you have that intimacy with God, God is saying, then you shall be prosperous. Then you should have good success, right? And so, and so you know, the formula for having good success in our lives it comes right down to the intimacy with God. I have never met anyone that has intimacy with God and has not been successful. That's a fact. I have never met anyone that have like not obeyed God, that have obeyed God, that have trusted God with their whole heart and have done whatever that God wants them to do and they have not been successful. Now, the idea of your your idea of success might be different from God, but according to God, as long as you obey Him, trust Him, and do and do what He says, you shall have good success. It may not look the way that you think it's going to turn out, but according to God and according to heaven, you are successful when you trust God, when you obey God, when you do the things of God. Because trust me, your obedience to God can mean someone else deliverance. The other day, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to put it out there. The other day, I was struggling. It was last week. And after I paid my car insurance, <laughs> thank you, Geico, <laughs> no offense. After I paid my insurance, I had maybe 17 or $19 left in my account. 
And I was like, God, look at this. I serve you, God. I trust you, God. But Planet Fitness is going to take out their $24 and I'm going to be in the negative. Brother was broke. <laughs> I'm blessed, but I just didn't have it to reflect in my bank account. <laughs> Sometimes I wish God would sell those cattle on a thousand hills, liquidate it and send it to my bank account. <laughs> but here I was. Saturday was hard. Hardly had anything to, to eat. I was wondering, God, how am I going to survive? How am I going to make it? And I can't touch the money in my account because I don't even have that much. And I heard the Lord said, you know, wait till Sunday. Sunday came. I preached a powerful message. I think I preached a message called um, buried um, for our benefit. And I'm talking about, you know, God burying things in our life and God will make us successful and all of these things. Nothing. I went the whole day just like, God, what's up? It wasn't until 10 o'clock that night that I got a phone call where someone told me that God spoke to them and they sent me money that covered a lot of stuff. I'm not going to get into details, but I trusted God. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to trust God when you have a little bit to nothing. But I just decided to trust God. And I, and I was praying for months for um, a, one of my microphones that went out. I have a boom microphone that went out. And, you know, I'm like, God, I need that microphone to do the podcast and stuff. And <laughs> I'm like, God, how, and I need to survive. And that money that person sent, I got a brand new microphone that I've been praying for. And I was able to take care of other things. It's that when you obey God and trust God, things will happen, right? And I thank God for the obedience of that person, you know, that God used that person to deliver me. And God is saying, just be strong and be courageous because I will never leave you nor forsake you. And it's because of my intimacy with God that I didn't reach out to anybody on Sunday and say, you know, I'm going through a hard time. No, I just trusted God because that's what God said. And I'm going to stand on this word. You know, here's the thing, though. You know, the game plan of God is that he wants to show his greatness through us. And God sometimes shows the enemy his, his playbook, right? God will show the enemy his playbook. And this is to show you that even though the enemy might know the plans of God, he still cannot defeat God, right? But the enemy will try to bring obstacles and roadblocks and all these things, right? Trying to distract you, you know, in what God has spoken over your life, what God has said to you, be strong and, don't, and be courageous and focus on these things. And the enemy will try everything he can. He will use people against you, right? He will try to slander your name. He will try to bring temptation and distractions to you. But God's saying like, listen, I will show the enemy my, my playbook just to show you my power and still the enemy me still can't do anything about it, right? I remember like watching, growing up watching uh, Michael Jordan, you know, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and people talk about Larry Bird that and, and Michael Jordan, that they were like some of the biggest trash talkers, right? And, you know, some of the players, you know, some of their, um, some of their um, teammates would say that, you know, Larry Bird used to tell us like where he's going to take that shot and how he's going to shoot it. And exactly what he did is what he did. And Jordan too, right? And God was like, listen, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you my I'm gonna show you one of my best shots, right? I'm gonna create people that's gonna dominate you on this earth, right? And he said that you you might you might bruise their heel, but I'm gonna crush your head. God already told him from Genesis how the plan is gonna go. God showed him his playbook. Right? He knew all the players. The enemy knew all the players. The, the Lord showed him what, what the end result is going to be. Right? And yet still, the enemy still couldn't defeat God. What? Right? God showed him his playbook, but then he, he came himself. God is a superstar teammate that, 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 that came to this earth and show us how to deal with the enemy. Right? Show us how to be intimate with the Father. And God was like, yo, listen, you know, be strong. Only be strong and be courageous 
because there is greatness in you, but I need to be intimate. I need the intimacy with you. The, the, um, the, the next time that we see be strong and courageous, right, is in verse is in verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? And do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. And so the third time that now God is, is um, um, speaking to um, Joshua be, be, about being strong and courageous, the first time was, you know, inheritance. The second time was intimacy. And the third time that he's speaking to Joshua about be, be strong and courageous is about intimidation. He said, do not be intimidated, right? He said, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, right? As it says in the scripture, it says, do not be frightened or be dismayed for your Lord God is with you wherever you go. And so God, as he's speaking to Joshua, right? As he's speaking to Joshua, he is reassuring him, you know, that he's there. And three times within the reassurance, he's saying, be strong, right? And, and courageous because you have an inheritance, right? Be, be, only be strong and very courageous because you're going to have good success because of your intimacy with me, right? And now he's saying, be strong and courageous. Be not intimidated. Be not frightened, right? Do not be dismayed. The word, the word frightened mean afraid, anxious, or terrified, uh, dismayed um, has certain similarities: horrify, shock, shake up, take, take aback, confound, surprise, startle, alarm, frightened, um, scare, unsettled, throw off balance, de um, discomposed. Um, and the Lord is saying that do not be thrown off. He said, "Be strong and be courageous." He said, "Do not be intimidated. Don't be thrown off." By if you th if you if things don't work out the way you think it's going to work out, then do not be thrown off by that. Do not be thrown off by the smoke screen of the enemy. Do not be intimidated by anything the enemy is trying to do or people in your life. God is saying that you know I'm going to reassure you that you are guaranteed for greatness, and I'm going to show you what my game plan is. Right? I remember when I first um, started. Um, I got saved in '99. You know, went to seminary in 2000, graduated in 05. And uh, in the midst of me graduating, um, I met a friend of mine, a colleague, a friend of mine in school. Her name was Cheryl Simmons. And uh, God used her to help me to overcome, you know, a lot of things, right? You know, she had this thing where she used to try, she used to wake me up. She used to call me to get up at four in the morning. And so we would, you know, be, she said, hey, we got to go into Manhattan. We live in Brooklyn. She lived in an area called Bedford Stuyvesant. I was always living in Flatbush. And she called me up to say, hey, let's go to Manhattan. I'm like, what for? She said, meet me at such and such uh, in Manhattan by 5 a.m. And I was like, okay, or 4.30 a.m. And so what she was doing, she was reaching. She she had the she had the she had an anointing oil, right? That she was showing me how to take territories. And so we walked all the way through different parts of Manhattan. She was dropping the oil and she said, But well, read the book of Isaiah aloud as we're walking. And as we're walk and as you're reading it, keep praying. And we're praying and we're taking territories. And you know, and and God, you know, had her, we did that for like maybe a year, different parts of Manhattan. We even went around where Columbia University is, where Central Park is, Union Square, places where I was homeless at a time. And God was showing me that, listen, I'm showing you how to take territories. And we did that. And then there was a point where, you know, God had removed her out of my life. And so now I'm in Brooklyn and God said, remember what, you know, Cheryl um, was showing you? She's Reverend Cheryl now was showing you. You know, I want you to do the same, but I want you to go out by yourself. She's not with you now. And I felt like, God, how am I going to do this without her? Because I'm so used to doing it with her. And God said to me, I want you to go at the subway, at the mouth of the subway stations in, in New York City, in Brooklyn, and stand there rush hour and preach the gospel. I was like, what? You want me to do what? 
and different areas in Brooklyn and Canarsie, Rockaway Parkway, and different, you know, Utica Avenue and Eastern Parkway, like in Flatbush as well, you know, all over. And he said, I want you to go there at high time at rush hour and preach the gospel. And I was like, God, that's so scary. And God said to me, do not be dismayed. But if you don't go, I would dismay you before people. And I got scared. I was like, God, you're good. God gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. I don't want no problems with Jesus. And so I gathered myself while I was in my vehicle and I went out there. And I remember people are coming off the train station, coming out of trains and drones. And I stood there and I said, God, what do I say? People of New York or people of Brooklyn, I didn't even know what to do. God said, open your mouth and I shall speak through you. And as I opened my mouth, God began to speak through me. And as I began to speak, I saw people stopping and they were listening to me preach the gospel. God said, be strong and courageous and don't be dismayed because I have a track record with God with intimacy. I, and God has promised an inheritance that he will never leave me nor forsake me. And so God was reassuring Joshua in this passage as the leadership has changed now and that he is going to be taken, leading the people of, of nation of Israel over into the promised land. And God was leading me, you know, to a place that I have never been before. Sure, I was scared. Yes, I was nervous. But I remember the prayer. I remember what I remember what the um what the Lord said to me from the very beginning when I was swimming in that pool at the hotel. That asked me for what you want. I said, God, I want to be great for you. And God said, It is guaranteed. But I'm going to show you what my I'm going to show you what the plan, what the game plan is. And the game plan is like first of all, God will reassure you of who He is where he's going to be, how he's going to bring you through, and that it is guaranteed that you will go through and that you will take territories for God, whether it's territories at your job, whether it's territories in your family for you to evangelize the gospel, whether it's territories in your community, you know, to represent God wherever you go. God is saying, I want you to be me wherever you go. I want you to take territories. And so my first point is reassurance, Right? Our second point is remembrance, right? In verses 10 through 15, Joshua now, after he hears from God, he goes now to, to the people and he begins to tell them, right? Verse 10 says this, right? So, and Joshua commanded the officers of the people, pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, prepare your provisions for within three days you are you are to pass over the Jordan and go and in, to possess the land. Verse 12, and the Reubenites, Gad, Gadites, and, a half, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, Joshua said, remember the word that Moses, your servants of the Lord commanded you, right? The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest, number one, right? And he will give you a, the land your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain um, in the land that Moses um, uh, gave you um, beyond the Jordan, right? Verse 15 says, until the Lord gives you rest, your brothers, you know, um, as he has uh, to you, and also uh, take possession of the land, um, then you shall return to the land of your possession to possess it, right? And so Joshua now takes what God has told him and he goes to the people. And there's three things that Joshua did, right? Joshua was reminding them that, you know, that, 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 that they are to travel with them over to possess the land, but they already have their own land be on the other side of the Jordan, right? Then Joshua was telling them about the rest that, listen, not until we all get rest, then you can get your rest too, right? Even though your your wives and the women and the children are already in the land resting, but you won't have rest until we have rest. And then Joshua is reminding them that there is, you know, after we get rest, they're gonna, there's going to be a returning, right? <laughs> and so as Joshua is telling them this, right? He's commanding them. He's reminding them, right? Just like how the Holy Ghost, you know, will bring things back to our remembrance of what he said. That is one thing that God can reassure us. But reassurance is one thing. 
But the Holy Ghost will continue to remind us about what he said. He's like, do not forget this. Don't forget that. You know, whatever I said to you is still good until the very end, right? And, 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 and the Holy Ghost is like reminding us of the promises of God, right? And that when we, when we are walking in the promises of God, there is a resting that takes place, you know, within God and that we can always return to God no matter what, right? And so Joshua is letting the nation of Israel know, right, that, you know, that, that this is the deal that I'm going to bring back to remembrance of what was spoken to you um, by Moses, right? That you do have a place here, but, you know, until we are rested, you can't be rested. There is a commonality that has to take place. That if my brother or my sister in Christ is not good, then I can't be good. I remember when God sent me to my community in Flatbush to minister the gospel. I used to go from door to door and preach the gospel to people's homes because uh, when God first started me, it was at a Bible study at a local church. And then, you know, after that, a year after, I was trying to find a storefront to rent. And we did that for a while. But God really wanted to transition me to, to house churches model. Acts 2 model to, to visit people in their homes and have church in their homes and stuff like that in their apartments, right in the housing projects. But every time I used to go back to my place, you know, my own, my own room, my own, my own apartment and stuff like that, you know, I would not be at rest. Because God, I, I see the, the injustices within the community. I see what's going on with the young people. I see the struggle that's going on. And it bothers me, God. And, you know, if, if my sister or my brother in Christ, something's going on with them, I can't rest. And that there has to be a common, commonality of a cooperative spirit that if you're not okay, then I'm not okay. When you are okay, then I'm okay. It's like God is like, you know, that we have to move as one, not only physically, but also mentally and spiritually. That if someone is not okay, I'm going to pray for them until God sends a peace. And then when God sends a peace, then I will feel great. Then I'm at rest. And, and, and Joshua is letting the nation know that the, the, the nation that were on the other side of, um, of the, um, the Ganites and, um, and, and, um, and, and the other tribes, they're saying, listen, you can't, even though your wives and your children and your, and the females and your livestock is at rest on the other side of Jordan, you can't rest until we are rested too. And after you're rested, then you can return home. And so God, Joshua was reminding them, but God also reminds us that in him, there is, that there is a reminding, there is a resting and there's a returning. I remember when God first gave me the name for this, the, uh, the ministry, Calvary Crosses Church. And he gave, and he said, you know, the, the foundational scripture for this ministry is going to be the thief on the right hand side of Jesus that said, Lord, remember me. And God said, today you will be with me. Today you will be with me. And I remember when I brought that to, you know, my other colleagues and said, listen, God has called me to start a church, but I need help. You know, and they were willing to say, you know, we will help you to start this. And that's how we got started. And then God began to send me to other places in New York City to partner with other ministries, you know, because it was all about taking territories. But God is saying that there has to be a commonality. You know, if someone needs help, you go and help them, whatever ministry that is, whatever person that is. Right. And then because of that now, God, because of that obedience, God has transitioned me now to go and preach the gospel and, you know, and, you know, and, and also to reach out to other people who, who want to be concerned about the things of God. And so God had me start a, a ministry called Battalion for Christ, where we fast and pray for 40 days because we are concerned not only about our own lives, but our, you know, about God's concerns, right? And now God has given me this territory of a podcast right? Like God is reminding me from way back when what he has said, listen, I'm going to make you great. And I had no idea that what it's going to be about. 
But as time goes on, I'm starting to see, I'm starting to unfold how God is saying, this is what I mean for you to take territories, right? This is what I mean, and it is getting your greatness is going to, is guaranteed. You know, God reminded me that wherever I go in New York City or around the world, for me to always, you know, that Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York City will always be my home base. That is going to be my place of physical resting and it's going to be my return on this earth, wherever I go. And there has to be a place or a thing in your life where God is saying, you know, you know, this is your place of rest, right? Physically and also in him, right? And God will always remind you, bring back to remembrance. He will, number one, he will reassure you, but he will always remind you, you know, of your physical rest and of your spiritual rest in him, right? And so as, 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 you know, at this point, as, as Joshua has begun to speak to, to the nation, this is where now you really see a transformation that is taking place in Joshua. We see from the very beginning that there's a reassurance. We see next that there's a reminder or there's remembrance, right? And as God spoke to Joshua, he speaks to the people. And now we see where it all comes in full circle, verses 16 through 18. Verses 16 through 18 says, and they said, all that you have commanded that us for us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your words, whatever you command him shall be put to death. And here's the thing that they said, only be strong and courageous, right? And my, my last point is response. My first is reassurance. I got to re reassure you, right? Reassure you of what, of, of the things that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have a promise. And, and that has to do, you know, with inheritance, right? The place that God, you know, has, right? Inheritance and also the intimacy with God, you know, and also God said, do not be intimidated, right? That has to deal with reassurance. He said, do all these things and you'll be okay, right? Uh, God is going to bring back things to remembrance of what he said, the promises that he has said, you know, and said, hey, you're going to move forward. Do not worry about things, you know, and God is going to remind you. And God is, and now as Joshua spoke that to the nation of Israel, they responded and said, whatever that you have commanded us to do, that we will do. And they echoed the same thing that God has said to um, Joshua in the first nine verses that only be strong and courageous. It's one thing when God said, hey, be strong and courageous. But when you tell the same thing to other people around you about what God said, and they echo it back to you, like, listen, we're with you. Listen to God, what God is saying. You know, only be strong. And they echo the same thing. I'm sure maybe they didn't hear the conversation between God and Joshua. But the Holy Ghost spoke to them and they also confirmed and spoke it back to Joshua. And I believe between verses 1 and verses 18, Joshua was a complete different person. When I got the church started, I couldn't do it by myself. When I got the, you know, the outreach started, Word for Streets, I couldn't do it by myself. When I started to do the sidewalk preaching and the DJing and the people came out and they stood with me, I didn't even have people to help me serve pizza on the first day. But people in the community came out. They helped me serve the pizza to each other. The kids came and they grabbed the microphone and they gave shout outs and they prayed and they helped me move equipment. And I was like, oh my God, this is so great that I was so encouraged that the people in my neighborhood, they responded to what God was telling me the whole time. And that there are some people that are going to, that God is going to put with you. That's going to help you to stay encouraged. And Joshua not only was reassured by God, and not only that God reminded him, and he reminded the people what, what in the days of what, in the, from the days of Moses, but the people responded, which is my last point, they responded to Joshua in the same language as God spoke to Joshua, right? 
be strong and courageous. Joshua was a different person because now he knows for sure that the nation of Israel is with him. And as a new leader, I can only imagine what Joshua was going through. But I, my first time being a pastor, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to do stuff. But God put people around me to help me. And even today, that people stand with me, you know, stood with me and still standing with me today. And many of them will say, you know, come on, pastor, you got this. You know, God got you, you know, to continue to be strong. And it's because of the people that are in my life that God has surrounded me around that has helped me to stay encouraged because of what God said to me from the very beginning when I was swimming in that pool at the hotel, I'm going to make you great. That is God's game plan. It's called checkmate, right? <laughs> God is not even playing with the enemy. God is going to, God is like, yo, God is showing him the, the enemy, his playbook. And even when that God showed the enemy his playbook, God is saying, you, you still can't win. You still lost, right? God has given us the victory, right? And last year was, you know, this year is going to be 19 years since I've been doing ministry. And I'm still on fire for Jesus since day one, right? A full-time ministry. I've been saved uh, 24 years now, I guess, right? And so it's like I'm still on fire, and I still believe what God said, that you will be great. And God has a game plan for your life, for all of us, right? And it's guaranteed greatness that he plans to fulfill what we allow him to fulfill. Just say yes to God. Because God, from the very beginning, he's all about taking territories, but first, he wants to take territories in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, so you can walk in the fullness of who you are, who you created you to be. As God spoke to Joshua from the very beginning, he reassured Joshua that he is with him, he will never forsake him, and that no, wherever he goes, that he will have victory, wherever his, his foot tread on the ground that he will have victory and no one will be able to stand before him. And God gave him the strategy of success as he, is, as he was reassuring him. He said that be strong and of good courage. You know, and, 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 um, and God was saying like, listen, I have an inheritance for you, right? The strategy of success is my intimacy with you. Get to know God. That is your true strategy of success. There's times that I have failed in things, but I know that I can always recover because I have my intimacy with God. And God is saying, do not be worried, right? Don't be intimidated. And then we come all the way down, you know, the first point is reassurance, the second point of uh, remembrance, and then the third point is, you know, how are you going to respond and how is the people around you going to respond? And when you have people around you will, that will that will partner with you for the glory of God, you know, the greatness becomes even greater. And God is saying, uh, that's what I'm talking about. I want you to take territories. I want you to evangelize to your, to, to your, to your community. I want you to be me wherever you go. Wherever you go, God is saying that the presence of God is going to be with you. And I want you to take every single territory within your family, within your job, within your community, Wherever you go, overseas, wherever it is, you know, mentally, spiritually, physically, God said, I want to take those territories within you so I can show forth my glory. I want to show forth my greatness. And that is the game plan of God. Guaranteed greatness is our message today. Guaranteed greatness is, the, is, is God's game plan for you for you to fulfill everything that he desires for you to do and for you to be great for him, right? God will reassure you. God will remind you of things that he said. And then God will allow things, you know, people around you and your community res to respond to you. But how are you going to respond to God right now? You can just respond to God and say, God, here I am. 
And maybe you don't know God and maybe you want to know what God's game plan is for your life. And you can just say a simple prayer. You can just say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, God. I want to be grateful for you, God. I want to know what your game plan. I want to know what your purpose is for my life. And Lord, help me and deliver me and save me. And God is going to show you his game plan. Amen. Um, let us just pray. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray, Father God, that you may, I thank you, God, for your message today. I pray, God, that you will um, show whoever might be watching or listening to this message, God, um, how great they can be in you, God, and, and show them your game plan for their lives, Lord. Show them your purpose, God, and how they can take territories, God. But first, God, I pray, God, that you will, um, that you will show them that you need to take territories in their hearts, in their minds, in their souls, God, to have this, to be of, gr of great success, Lord. And I thank you for this message um, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So that is our message for today. Um, I thank God that uh, just continue to tune in for the next message from the series. This is the first uh, message um, of, a, of a series called Taking Territories. And the first message is Guaranteed Greatness, the Game Plan of God. Hey, go out there and let God use you in these territories. But first, make sure that God has the territories of your heart, your mind, and soul, that you have that intimacy with God. So God, so you can have great success, not only good success, great success out there. Amen? Amen. God bless. Be peace. Bye-bye now. All right.